Lately, our heat hasn't been working, so I have been using this little space heater here in the living room. Parker's been gone for the past four days. Not sure where he is, but as always, I'm starting my day off with a French press in my mug. I actually got up around 8.30 today, which is good because I really slept in yesterday. Today I'm going to be working on the latest piece in the same scene but different series. It's titled War Torn Mannequin and it basically depicts this really broken down mannequin. I believe it looks like it's at least 40 years old, which would be um, before or during the time that the Khmer Rouge overthrew the government and killed one third of the Cambodian population. So I feel as if this mannequin actually went through the act of war. So today I'm depicting this. Um, it was a mannequin that I saw in Bathambang, which is a province outside of Siem Reap. This is the side view. So yeah, I'm painting it like this. So today I'm going to work on some of the background areas. And there's a few more lines. These are just doorways. And then here is a guy sitting in the background, tiled floor. And that's pretty much it. But I'm really in love with this piece so far. I think I'm getting the dimension really well. And I'm really excited about it, actually. Um, the last piece I thought I would be more excited about. And then when I started painting it, I just kind of fell off. And I took um, quite a few days off recently. I, you know, I've been painting pretty vigorously all year, so it felt really good to take that break. So far, I'll probably have about 10 paintings, and um, I'm also going to have some ready-mades and about two collages and a couple other fun things in store for the show at 111 Gallery. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. You know, um, it feels really good to have a direction and something to focus on, you know, while I'm, uh, sorry, trying to set this camera up. But yeah, it feels good to have something to focus on um, rather than just kind of drifting, you know. It's been really good working on this channel. Um, some days the painting was really, really difficult for me and I had to kind of forge through. But overall, you know, I've had a really great year and I can't believe it's already like mid-November. That's insane to me. I don't know. I guess as you get older, time just goes a little bit faster, doesn't it? Or it seems to anyway, the perception. Yeah, yesterday I had some fun painting these greens here. Fabric. Many variations of green. Now today I'm working with gray. Now let me show you a little bit about my process here. So I do reference most of my material with the exception of some. Um, I think my next series I'm going to reference more my mind and memory and just not really reference the material per se. I kind of been in this perfection mood lately. But yeah, so this is my process. So I have the JPEG here on my computer. You'll see. And I blow it up to look at the detail. Now, a really, really good tip that I learned, our computers obviously divide the color into pixels. And when you go on a really, really um, a huge zoom in, you can see all these individual colors. So a trick that you could use when you're just starting out mixing color, or if you're, or if you're having difficulty with a certain color, is to zoom in, look at all the different colors that comprise that section of color on the overall picture. On this strand of mannequin hair here. And then, basically go to your tubes of paint and pull together those colors. So in this case it would be this, I, I know it by heart because I put so many damn hours into painting, but it would be this, the old Holland blue gray for me, titanium zinc white, chevigny warm gray, a little bit of Van Dyke brown, maybe some Mars yellow, 
possibly some burnt sienna, a touch of burnt umber. <laughs> like, okay. I love that I know how to make it an exact color now, but you get the point. So you would pull together all those pixels and create that color. Um, that's kind of awesome that we have this contemporary means of looking at it rather than just a flat thing, you know? Um, I was always really bad during standardized testing regarding spatial reasoning. Like, if there were a bunch of cubes and they told you to twist the cube, like to the left or to the right or up and down, I never knew how to manage that spatial reasoning in my head, which I always found was interesting because I can paint dimension pretty well. But then I realized, and what we were talking about is that I'm not a sculptor, and maybe that actually helps me, you know. Actually, I was talking about this with uh, Robert Telenik, you know. Um, yeah, I just met Robert. He's really cool. He is the program director at the Art Students League here in New York. And um, this Thursday, I might be going with him to a class, um, and I'm going to help him monitor, monitor the class. And it's, uh, I guess they bring in all these like dancers and the people in the room drawing on um, the people in the class, they are drawing these dancers like while they're in a state of movement. Um, so maybe I'll bring my little sketch pad too and hopefully get some drawing time in. But that'll be a nice switch from going to the usual art shows that I do <coughs> on Thursday. Uh, my new silicoil tank's working out really well. Um, today I'm probably going to plug in about four hours of painting time, which means I really need to get on the road here. It's 1045. So, <clears throat> as I mentioned in my past um, vlog in my studio, I'm going to go to my clock. I'm going to put the timer on, click it up to four hours, and boom. And as soon as my paintbrush hits the easel, that is when I press start on the time. If I take a bathroom break, pause. Food, pause. Um, these are the gloves I'm using right now. Same as always, but they're working out really well. The, sensitiv the sensitivities to my hands have subsided, which is great. I developed an allergic react or rash to the dish soap I was using. <clears throat> oh, and I shaved my head. Blair did it for me, actually, and I really love it, you know? It's like, you know, it's different. I always wanted to shave my head ever since high school. You know, and I really had to convince him to do it, and finally he was like, fine, 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 after like an hour. And he did a really good job. Blair has a really extreme particular attention to detail, actually which I love. So anyway, I'm going to get started. And um, as I think of more ideas um, throughout the day, I'll keep you tuned in. Okay. So I'm painting these works on raw canvas, cotton duck. Um, it's about medium thickness. And I prime it about five to seven times to get a nice smooth texture. And Blair built me this little backboard here. Basically, I'm just affixing the canvas via staples, as you can see. I put them about an inch apart each. The canvases are going to come rolled to Cambodia in a large tube that is about 61 inches total. So I'll be able to check it onto the airplane, which is great. Um, and these will actually be hung raw. So flat. Um, I actually kind of like this idea and I'll probably actually hang these works in New York uh, raw and flat as well and then I'll be able to roll them up. Um, I just like, I like that look. I like that aesthetic. You know, it's somewhat unfinished so it lends a feel to the painting. Um, the painting as it exists on its own as a painting not just a representation of a picture or something like that. Um, to actually show the touches of the paint. And I really like that look. And now I am watching some Gary Vaynerchuk after lunch. I love Gary Vaynerchuk and I watch him almost daily. Um, he's just an amazing entrepreneur. 
um, has a company called VaynerMedia based in New York and he's really profoundly changed the way that I view entre entrepreneurship and making a living doing what I love. So anyway, give him a shot. So yeah, now I've only been painting for an hour and a half. I'm about to go in for two and a half more hours. So here we go. All right, now I got so cold that I put the heater like literally right next to me. Look at this. Anyway, so I'm gonna show a little bit about how I blend colors. So I lay them down on the canvas like this, and you can see the sharp lines between each. But I'll lay the blocks of color down, especially in like broad areas like this. And then I take one of two brushes to smooth this out. I take either a Kalinske Sable by Old Holland, which is my favorite, favorite Kalinske Sable brand. And um, I like this one for broader areas, the, the flat one. Or I take a traditional fan brush and I pick up these for very, very cheap. I believe this was one to seven dollars perhaps. But you know, I run through them pretty quick because they are very fine in the bristle and they tend to splay out and um, kind of get ruined pretty quick but the cheap ones are amazing and they'll last for, for a while because I only use them for this particular thing but anyway for this particular swath I'm gonna use the band brush and so as you can see I just take it and it it takes away all the brush marks which is what I'm aiming for in this doorway here so, and you know, you'll get the feel of it after a while. I don't know, I'm kind of a perfectionist so I really like to get a smooth look. And so as you can see, this starts to get smoothed out. And I'll show it to you in one second. Um, so here's what it looks like smoothed out after the brush. But yeah, it just gives it more depth there rather than just using a straight black, you know? Okay, another thing I like doing, it's now two o'clock. Um, I like watching informational videos to learn, to constantly learn while I'm painting. Um, okay, so the power just went out. Um, I'm wondering if this fucker had something to do with it, but I'm gonna get to the bottom of this. So anyway, the power situation is not yet resolved, so I'm going to take it as a sign that I need to head to the gym. So I'm going to go get a good strength workout in. I have my same, same, but different shirt on, and my awesome beat you to it. Jogging pants, and yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and burn some steam off, and um, it's going to make me feel a lot better, I just know it, and I'll get some fresh air. So, see you later for a while, Bromley. Okay. So I got from the gym and I just wanted to share a few things with you that I'm going to be sending out. Um, and also I want to share a little trick with you that's not really a trick, it's something very very straightforward and easy that'll save you a lot of time if you're sending out a lot of postcards for upcoming exhibitions. So I just picked these up from Staples. Um, I really like these. They have like the gold border and they're super, super cute, but I like how they're smaller because um, I formatted my postcards so I don't actually have a lot of room on the actual postcard to put the address label. So they're a little bit smaller and then so, you know, this comes with a template. You just look it up on the website and then you can type in all the addresses. I have about 175 people to send them to so I don't really want to handwrite all those. This is my Moo.com order, and as you all know, I absolutely love, 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 love Moo.com. I have been using them for years for my business cards. I just got a slew of postcards printed with them, and I will show you the postcard design. Designed by me, with a little bit of help from my graphic design sister. These, this is how the packaging is. I absolutely love it. I think it's so cute. But anyway, it opens like this, and I'm not sure how many are in each, but 
I have Lipstick Queen on one side, and on the back I format it so I have all the information on this side, and then the address label will go right over here. And hopefully I will not be so lazy um, as to, I'll definitely write you all messages or just like a little blurb on there. So anyway, I have a lot to do with regards to that. And my new business cards came in as well. I'll go ahead and show you these. Oh, and here's my stamp, my, my first set of stamps. I got like a couple of booklets. I'm going to have to get many, many more. It's a little bit expensive to ship or to send out mail still. But anyway, these are the new cards. As you see, Moo.com is fucking top notch with their package designs. Really amazing. And look at this. My goodness, you're gorgeous. Thanks. Okay, I'm cheesy as hell. I'm sorry. But anyway, this is how they come. And you pull off the little top here. So, you know, if you don't have a card carrying thing in, or like a, you know, just like a card holder, you could bring this with you. It's kind of bulky, so I just take a few out at a time, put them in my wallet. I got several new designs, my new paintings. I'm going to go through these quick so you can't see them very much, but the printing design is great. Oh, here, I showed you this one recently. This is Dick Cave. But I love the rounded corner. This is the Moo size. Love the rounded corner. Bogator twin, or queen. So yeah, um, these I got specifically because I'm going to bring them to Cambodia with me. And I'll be able to give people a little sneak peek of the show. So, Moo.com is killing. But anyway, I don't think I'm going to do any more painting today. I'm going to go check out the power situation now that I'm back from the gym and see if I can get the lights at least turned on in the living room. And then I'm going to work on work on these, getting the postcards sent out for all of you who have asked for one. If you would like one, please let me know. I will add you to my mailing list and send you a postcard. Love you all so much. Thank you so much for the support. Um, yeah, back in my pajamas and going to get back to work. So... See you soon.